So it's been a while since my last produced video. Now that's partly because I've been busy with in real life stuff, but uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact I lost six months of footage. Having to piece together a video from B-roll and C-roll is kind of demoralizing, but it does give me a great excuse for why this video is going to be so short. Ow. So, several months back, Kevin from AMD sent me a Ryzen 2400G and asked me if I wanted to make a video on it. Now, I'm glad he did, because AMD's last APU offerings have turned me off of the idea completely. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me six and a half times, you get the idea. The good news is the 2400G redeems the concept of the APU for me, and I've actually been using this much more than my normal system just because of how fun it is. So I know my videos are usually about building over the top ITX systems, but that's because my customers are ordering something specific and because it makes for good YouTube. But my interest lies in getting the bare minimum hardware requirements needed to satisfy my goals and then making it as small and pretty as possible. Now, to be honest, I expected this APU not to have enough CPU or GPU in order to do anything that I wanted, much like the past APUs. But to my surprise, I was definitely wrong. I was able to play every Blizzard game on my list at 4K and decent looking graphics. I also favor a lot of indie games, and of course it handled that with no sweat. But even games like PUBG, I was able to play at 2K and get 60 FPS, though every game did require some tuning with the graphics sliders. It's not going to be a replacement for an enthusiast that wants a discrete GPU, but depending on what your goals are, it definitely is a good, solid product. Definitely good enough and interesting enough for me to do something silly. Stick it in an S4 Mini, brickless, and water cool it. My APU build had spent its life being tested in my custom Lone L4, which is the practical format for this hardware. And as I just said, I love practical hardware, albeit wrapped in an impractical candy coating. Now, I thought about building a completely custom solution, but I get so many emails asking me about fitting an all-in-one in a mini, so I decided to start there first. Well, I should say second, because I've already done it back in the S4MC days. But this time I wanted to video it, and also I wanted the end result not to be terrible. Now, if you follow my streams, you know I'm not a fan of all-in-ones for a litany of reasons. Oftentimes, they mix copper and aluminum, they aren't fully filled by the time you get them, the pumps are weak and short-lived, and they are noisy. But worst of all are those bulky, stiff tubes which are horrible to work with. So after a lot of searching, I found the only all-in-one with the following bullet points. Copper jet plate and radiator, quality pump, at least reportedly, fill ports on the radiator and pump, and replaceable tubing. Now the only problem is the fractal design Kelvin T12 had long been discontinued in the USA and was end of life everywhere else, and I was not going to pay three times retail to have it imported from Israel. Luckily for me, my stream viewers are epic, and Sebastian stepped up and offered to purchase and ship one from Sweden with no extra markup. He even included an assortment of candy from his sovereign nation. He is the third viewer of this channel to do that, and it is just the coolest thing ever, even if the salted licorice was the worst thing I've ever put in my mouth. After a quick test to make sure everything was working, it was time to destroy my warranty, which I technically didn't have because it's a gray market product that's been discontinued. So this is important. When picking out your all-in-one for your Mini, spoilers, don't bother, you need to account for the tube height. The T12 radiator actually looked pretty good, and with a good pump, I think it could perform solidly, but it's definitely too thick to be used in the Mini because of the fitting locations. Now, I knew this ahead of time, so I had a copper radiator from Cool Ants ordered up along with some low-profile fittings. This would also allow me to change the tubing to something more compact and make it the perfect length. The first step was to drain the radiator, which, by the way, was disappointingly not full when I got it. Believe it or not, fluid will evaporate from the hoses of these closed loops, which is why all-in-ones tend to perform so badly and get only worse over time. This happens in custom loops too, but when you have a reservoir, it's not a big deal because the system is constantly being bled. The fluid in this was also pretty nasty and on its way of breaking down. This would not be a huge problem for this particular all-in-one as both the cold plate and the radiator were copper, but surprisingly, many all-in-ones actually use copper cold plates with aluminum radiators. And when the fluid breaks down, it loses some of its corrosion protection and the fluid and metal in these loops can get quite nasty. I had to use a little heat to do it, but I eventually got the fittings off the combo unit and my new low-profile swivel fittings on. Then I test-fitted my layout before the next very messy step. So, here's how I got this sealed unit filled. First, I got a dish and filled it with water. Simple enough. 
and injected the pump with enough water to start cycling. I let it run so it filled up the loop and got rid of many bubbles and debris from the old fluid as possible. When the bubbles were out and the fluid was sucking into the radiator, I began the next step, which was to insert a fill tube into the inlet side of the radiator. This was pretty interesting. Even with the pump off, any fluid I put in would immediately suck down because of capillary flow, but air wouldn't pull inside the radiator because of the fill line. What I did next was pour dyed coolant into my tube and watch until I saw it pour out underwater of the loop exit. Being very, very, very careful not to bring the tube up over the water line, I screwed it underwater into the radiator. This was a pretty cool science experiment for me, especially because everything that I predicted came true, which never happens in my lab. <laughs> it definitely was a treat. I had to repeat this process several times because of some latent air bubbles in the combo unit, but eventually I had a bled loop. The last mod I needed to do was for a 3D bracket, which would hold the internal AC-DC power supply and radiator into place. I whipped one up in CAD and printed it off with Compact's Mark Forged. Because of the size of the unit, I had to print it in two pieces, and to weld it together, I used the printer manufacturer's recommendation, which is Loctite 401. For strong mounting points, I used a soldering iron to melt the brass nut certs into the part. Because this was my personal computer, I wanted to dress it in something absolutely special. Another one of my YouTube viewers, Greg Santoro, made me a beautiful bezel at a Coco Bolo and sent to me along with a handmade box knife as an incredible gift. I am so speechless over this gift, guys. I mean, I can't appreciate it enough even when I get candy, but to have something handmade like this just knocked me off my feet. With all the parts made up and mods done, it was time to assemble the build. I waited for my Monday live stream and did it live. And if you want to watch it, click the link in the description. What do I think about the build? <laughs> What do you think about the build? I think it's the silliest of all my silly and practical builds that I've ever done. I gained no performance benefit, barely improved my temperatures from my low profile cooler, I spent a ton of money, and probably most disappointing of all, the system was way too noisy for me to keep it long term. I could get the fan under control quite easily, obviously, but like most all-in-ones, the pump was really noisy, and it only got worse over time as the fluid slowly evaporated. Really, even one tiny air bubble can cause a big racket in a loop like this. Now you're probably wondering, Josh, where are the benchmarks? Where are the thermal images? Do you have any audio of what the pump actually sounded like so I can make a decision for myself? And no, I don't. That was some of the stuff I lost that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Also, I consider this build a massive technical failure, and I promise you, you probably don't want to attempt it the same way that I did it. But don't consider the project a total failure. I had a lot of fun doing it, especially interacting with you guys that sent me stuff to help finish it. I also learned that I really like the Ryzen 2400G. Yes, I was sent the processor for free, but like most things I'm sent for free, if I don't like it, I don't end up making a video and I send it back. This, not sending it back. I actually like the performance so much, and more importantly, the concept of the performance, that I'm contemplating making a tiny PC case for APU builds now. You guys have asked for it, I've said no, but now I'm thinking about it. I want to give a shout especially to Kevin from AMD for sending me the Ryzen 2400G, to Ed Chrysler from Sapphire for letting me borrow some RAM to do the testing on, to Sebastian for getting a hold of the Kelvin T12 and shipping it to me all the way from Sweden, to Loan from Loan Industries for hooking me up with a Loan L4, which I absolutely love, and a super special thank you to Greg Santoro for making me that awesome bezel and box cutter knife. I really appreciate these people, but I also really appreciate you guys for participating in these builds now through the live streams. It's a lot of fun. Despite the content not being super exciting, the community is, and I really do appreciate that and look forward to doing more with you. So peace to you, and I'll see you next time.